Okay, so the refrigerant is uh, going in. As you can see, the refrigerant's going in. This is uh, a 123 chassis, 123, 1,300 grams. And you can see right here on the VIN code, that's a 123 chassis right there. And then the other place, for you non-Mercedes guys, you Mercedes guys know, over here, the model, 123 right there. And so you match that up with the selection because this chassis came with different vehicle, uh, different uh, chassis numbers for this tag will give you different amounts. So you have 1,000 grams, 1,300. Sometimes they'll have a third or a fourth. Okay, we're approaching 1,000. And so this one, actually I'm gonna stop right here because I'm thinking that uh, the, case, the case is gonna leak. That's my uh, prediction. Let me cut this a little short. I'm going to stop at 1,100. And uh, there we go. I'll add the rest in later. Because my fears is that case is going to leak. But I do want to bring it up almost right to the maximum level. Because I want to uh, not... This is 134. It's not R12. So you do not fill it up to 1,300 grams of R134 in an R12 system with everything R12. Uh, all the components, it's uh, it will be way overcharged. So let me put this down here. Let's start it up. Get that little diesel emblem to shine. Hey, where's the diesel emblem? It's not shining. Okay, the light must be out. So I'll just wait a few seconds for the diesel glow plugs to heat up. And I think that's about enough time. It should start. Yep, listen to that thing. 1983, boom. Starts like an old diesel, like it was brand new. That's only 135,000 miles. This could go another 400,000 miles, no problem. Let's make sure the AC is on. Turn on high, there, minimum. Make sure the vents are open. Open, 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 two closed. Hundred and thirty on the high side, thirty-five on the low side, just starting out right now. But what I'm concerned about is that case. So let's grab this light. Let's look under. My black light I'm looking around at the case you know what I don't see this has been changed before it already leaked okay so this did leak before this is the new style o-rings and they're not o-rings this is the bushing this is the new machine case this is not the old kind of casting of the case that was pressed fit. This is the machine shell. This is different. It's missing this bolt right here. And it used to have the O-ring. When these were original, there was an O-ring down here. This has already been replaced. So I'm probably not going to have a leak right there. All right. So now I'm afraid that there's too much oil in the system. That's my other worry. And now uh, when somebody else retrofits and changes uh, compressors, I don't like the way guys oil balance because they usually never heard of oil balancing or they don't know about it or they don't understand it. But other than that, let's see what we got going on here. And we're at idle and it's a diesel. So down to 26, it's nice and cold. It's 45 degrees right here. That's actually a little cooler. I got the hot engine heat blowing over my, my, um, thingamajigger there and let's get my what's the name of my damn thing um, let's get my iPad and take a look at some readings sorry guys I didn't have this ready for you 
because I wasn't going to make a video on this one. But, come on, turn on. There we go. All right. That's, uh, I'm not even going to get my temperature gauge yet. I just want to read the temperature of the suction line. I don't want pressure. I'm not concerned with pressures. I'm not concerned with anything. I have this blowing on me, and it's damn cold. And it's only at idle. So it is doing what it should be doing. Let's get over to field piece. Field piece. Bluetooth to our just our gauge. I don't have the remote temperature sensors hooked up yet And I just want to see this temperature right there 45 degrees is coming out of the evaporator after about four feet of line three feet of metal pipe with the hot engine air Going over it. That's damn good. And we're at idle Right there. Or there's our idle uh, RPM now. I'm gonna go up to about a thousand RPMs now the compressor will work more efficiently once I get there come on diesel diesel do not move like uh, today's gas cars I'm I just pushed it like two and a half inches to get it to move a little bit okay we're getting there all right that's where I want to be and then, then the diesel is a turbo and it's taking off on me I'm having a there we go I got it at a thousand I think I got it at a thousand steady so let's hold it right there now look at our temperature so this is our suction line going back to the compressor way to hell over there with my uh, you can see the yellow wire my temperature sensor is not insulated it's in the hot air stream of the radiator and hot air of the condenser and it's still pulling this temperature at uh, roughly a thousand rpms where are we at right there and it's it's steadily it's slowly going up and slowly circuits are we can watch our expansion valve modulate up and down as it moves so we know there's movement and it's working so i'm wondering if it, it seems like uh from here in the passenger seat it's like the electric fan is not kicking on and the uh, fluid driven thermal fan clutch is not engaging yet. Let's go out there and take a look or a listen. Let me see if I can hear something. Okay. Oh, yeah, the fan is on. Fan's on. Uh, that's well, the fan has to be off. For me to check the fluid fan clutch, I have to wait here 15, 20 minutes. I have to disconnect. The fan clutch, uh, the electric fan, I have to have the engine and coolant up the temperature. And the temperature, the center mass of the aluminum where the fluid and the little thermal expansion um, uh, bimetallic temperature wire that's located inside a thermal fluid fan clutch. You guys gotta, you guys gotta study how a fluid fan clutch works. When I was a kid, my dad used to make me cut them apart and open them up. Every part on a car, my dad used to make me cut apart and take apart. Uh, he would not let me work on anything. Same with diesel. Uh, my dad did diesel too. So we would take apart and rebuild the diesel fuel pumps. And before I had, I had to study the diesel fuel pumps in the book by the factory first. And then he would bring one up from the bench for me to take apart and rebuild. And uh, that's how I was taught as a child before high school. Okay. So we're looking good. Uh, let's see what the temperature is because it says uh, 103 degrees, but that's right up here. So some of this hot air is rolling around forward. So let me get this guy right here. And I can feel heat out. I actually feel heat out here. Yeah, right here. Holy shit. Yeah, there's a lot of hot air blowing back and rolling around. So 79, 80 degrees. So it's roughly 80 degrees pulling over the front of this. We're at 216 on the high side. That thermal fan is my only concern. And, uh, 
take a look in there. We're going real good. The die is working. It's doing its job. And uh, I'm not going to fill it up anymore. I'm going to leave that one right there. I don't want to go any more than that one. Because I went at 1,100 and something, almost 1,002. And we're down to 42 degrees at our suction line. We're turning back to the compressor. I don't care about the temperature. We're not looking at temperatures. And I'm not looking really at pressures. I want that temperature is what I'm looking at. And oh my God, that feels good. We're out in the sun load. The sun is coming through the dash, heating up the dash, heating up the seeds. So we have a good load on this vehicle. It's 80 degrees outside. And uh, 135, somebody did replace the compressor because I told you those compressors uh, leak at the shell and apparently it did and somebody in the past already uh, changed it. I think this is the one he told me. This just came from Hong Kong. This was another one that was just imported from Hong Kong from the owner over in Hong Kong here to his house here. Uh, some of those guys they have multiple houses around the world and they just ship their cars around like it's nothing more than shipping around a piece of mail. Um, all right. So I think we're a done deal here. Somebody else already took care of the leak on the compressor. Uh, it has the original hoses. So I already know it's losing on these hoses. It loses refrigerant right through the hoses as they get old. And we got our beautiful condensation coming up here. That's looking good. We're down to 42 degrees on the suction line. That loss of see the insulation is gone. All the insulation is eaten up. That's supposed to have insulation. If this was my vehicle, I'd literally get the big insulation. I'd even insulate the rubber going all the way back and all the way to the compressor. Because they don't insulate it that much, but I do. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. And uh, if you look at the high side, it's actually dropping. As it's cooling, it's setting out, and it's getting into its normal paces. And let me disconnect. Oh, let me do a little experimentation here. Let's disconnect the fan switch. Hold on, guys. There we go. I just disconnected the fan switch. So now we have no airflow from the auxiliary fan. My thermostat is open. I'm hot here. I got a hot radiator. So I got the heat of the condenser going across and then picking up more heat from the radiator. Then this will go across and it will hit the metal and it will make the bimetallic spring, spring rotate. And eventually that fluid driven plan clutch should kick in near one to one and go with the engine after a while and really blow like a hurricane. If it does not, and you can never get that thing to blow. This, now you see this is cri cri not creeping up. We're at 157 or 257. It'll creep up to around 300 or so before that kicks in. Now, if it doesn't kick in, replace it. And I think they never replaced it. They should have done that when they did the compressor. Um, I'm gonna have to look into that better. Get my uh, scope and get my uh, look to see if it looks like it's been replaced. Because if it has not, we're here in the summertime. I'm gonna recommend them to get a new fluid thermal fan clutch and that will it has nothing to do with cooling the engine airflow airflow and airflow condensers are really really sensitive to even a few hundred few less airflow will greatly jack up your high safe pressure and reduce the efficiency of your AC when you have a thermal driven fan clutch just replace it it's cheap it's easy replace it and see I'm stressing it because I intentionally turned off I don't want cooling from the electric fan. I want this hot air caused by the radiator and the condenser to heat up the bimetallic spring inside the thermal fan clutch because I'm want to. i making it work hard. I'm making it get hot because I want to see it engage. All right, guys, I'll see you later. This is it on this because I got to get back over there to the Hummer.